Hey, this is Jack, and this video is called The Number One Secret to Be Irresistible to Him. Hey, welcome to the channel. If you're new or if you haven't yet subscribed, I want to encourage you to subscribe to the channel. Just hit that subscribe button and then tap the bell notification so you hear of new videos as soon as they come out. My name is Jack Butler. I'm a relationship coach and I release at least two new videos every week and I'd love to have you part of this growing and vibrant community. All right, so let's get into it. What's the number one secret to being irresistible to him? Well, the number one secret to being irresistible to him is actually to care less about being irresistible to him. My contention to you is that with the right guy, you don't actually have to do anything to be irresistible to him or in, let's put that into real speak for him to want to be with you and commit to you. And in some ways, there is an insidiousness that erodes at the base of your own authenticity. If you walk around in the perspective that there's this thing that you have to do in order to be loved by him, what that probably does is reinforce an erroneous belief that you have to do something in order to be loved. Wouldn't it be better if you could relax into the knowingness that you are already enough, that you're already worthy, that you're already loved, and then you bring that into the way that you connect with men? What is in fact, could it be true, is most irresistible to him is you being deeply and truly yourself. That there is a flavor, a signature essence, a life force, a vitality that is you. And that that is more than enough for the right guy to want to be with you. And that anytime you're getting into a performance, a strategy, a persona, a thing that you've got to do in order to feel that you need to be loved and appreciated, you might want to stop and go to work on yourself there. Because a big part of your inner work could be uncoupling the notion that you have to do something in order to get something. That you have to do something in order to be loved. You have to do something in order to be irresistible. And by the way, just to bring some of my signature flavor of sobriety to the question of irresistibility, you might find that if you're so irresistible to a guy that he just can't get enough of you, that he's just completely intoxicated by you, that that probably won't be your guy over the longer term. That most people, when they stabilize into a long-term relationship, that there's a kind of way that we can be with each other that actually isn't about me trying to be addicted to you or you being addicted to me. That that kind of addiction or ongoing irresistibility at the core of it is probably not the healthy relationship that you're actually looking for. And that in my experience, and check this out for yourself, that kind of addiction and irresistibility tends to burn bright and fast and then leave people kind of confused because they thought that that guy was gonna be around with them at the, for the long term. And actually what they had was an intense lovership, but it didn't really ever stabilize out as partnership and nor was it going to because there's a different energy of stickability, of reality, of two people figuring out life together that is the core of most partnerships in my experience of this in my life and also in working with you know literally thousands of women at this stage. So what would it be like for you if you could care a little less about being irresistible or being attractive to him and be a little more curious about the real you that can come to the surface, the real you that isn't identified with a particular persona. So let me unpack this for you. If you haven't come across personas or even if you have, this might just be a good uh, revision for you. Anytime we're in a persona, we're wearing a mask that allows us to function more easily in a particular situation. Personas are crucially important to our social development. They're an awesome part of being human. And then at a certain level of development, we have to learn how to relax them or we have an opportunity to relax them because we realize that the persona isn't us. So if you've been a, res a good girl, a nice girl, a great listener, the responsible one, the hero, the caregiver, the martyr, the savior, and this list is basically ad infinitum, it goes on and on, you can keep finding in, you know, more and more subtle personas. If you've been attached, identified to any one of these, it's very hard for you to show up as the true you because you will probably start locating your value in the persona rather than in the real you underneath. It's a little bit like if you have an amazing outfit that is completely dazzling and you notice you get a lot of attention from guys when you wear that outfit, you don't really know if what they're drawn to is the outfit or to the deeper you underneath. Now, absolutely wear the outfit. 
Absolutely have personas that you are in, but do it consciously, do it knowingly that I'm, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm in a persona right now. I'm really gonna push into my persona of being the good listener here, but I'm not gonna have be fixated in it. I'm not gonna be limited by it because actually then the real me doesn't get to come fully into the relationship. And I start to think, oh, he only likes me because I listen to him, right? He only wants to be with me because I cook him dinner all the time. Or he only wants to be with me because I spend so much time with his family or because I clear up after him or you fill in the blanks that are relevant for your own life. But if you find yourself in those kind of thought forms, you might want to go to work on relaxing them in service of you having a deeper trust that the you-ness, the suchness of you, the essence of you is enough, is what the right guy, certainly if he's a guy at a more mature level of development, that that's what he's going to want. He's going to actually want you. He's not going to want your performance. He's not going to want your doing this. Of course, in a relationship, we do things for each other, right? Acts of service, mutual obligations. So I'm not pretending that's not part of it, but that's not the way that you constellate the right relationship that's based upon, oh, we're into this because we keep doing these things for one another. What about if we're into it because your soul and my soul want to play together? What about if we're into it because you being yourself and my being ourselves, we both want to be on that journey? What about if we're in, into it because we can just sit down together and enjoy each other for who we are beyond anything that we need to do for each other? Wouldn't that be a much uh, more loving and wholesome place for you to be in relationship from than in, a, in, in an orientation that I got to keep doing this thing so that I can be irresistible to him, so that I can have him addicted to me, right? That's, that's appropriate at a certain level of development. But if you're still watching this video right now, my imagination is that that's not really the root that you want to have your life in. That's not the soil that you want to grow the right relationship in. Now, in order to trust that your essence is enough, you've got to love your own essence. And for most of us, that's our work, right? For most of us, the kind of self-love that says, hey, I love who I am in all my light and all my dark, in all my brilliance and in all my shadow, in all my radiance and all my frailty. That for most of us is work and ongoing work to actually love the, your essence. Because here's the, here's the rub of it. If we drop it down a level, if you're in this pattern of he loves me because of my persona, he loves me because of the things that I do for him, the chances are that that is located in a place in you that you don't love yourself beyond the things that you do or beyond the performance that you have. Right? Does that make sense? If you're are able to love yourself for your own beingness, for your own, just the fact that you're here, you're unique, your vibration, expression, voice, sound, flavor, essence, these are unique in all time. If you can't love yourself for that, you're always gonna be liable to a pattern of, I've gotta do something in order to earn love, right? Love is earned rather than love is. Love is is a much more powerful place to live your life from. Earning love keeps you tracked in a loop of, I've got to perform, I've got to make this effort, I've got to do this for them. If I don't do this for them, they're not going to love me. He only loves, I don't even know if he loves the real me. He loves me because I do all these things for him. It's a very seductive pattern. And if that's you right now, have some compassion with yourself. I'm not making it wrong. I'm just saying there's another way of being that I think will serve you more. And that once you taste it, that's the thing that you're going to want more of in your life. You're going to want more of the you that doesn't have to work so hard. More of the you that can be at rest and trust in her loveliness. Trust in the flavor of being irresistible to him because actually he gets to be with the real you. And the real you doesn't have to keep performing. The real you is there, is already, is becoming. This is a real deep thing right now. Is it true that you might meet a whole bunch of guys that love your performance and love the fact that you do things for them? Yeah, you're gonna meet guys all levels of consciousness, right? Your job is to discern and trust that you'll know when you meet a guy that has the level of consciousness that is a good relationship for you to be in, is a good choice of partner for you. And most of us on that journey, honestly, will make some mistakes. Right? So permission to learn, permission to get out there and make a mistake, permission to fall in love with someone and then realize, yeah, actually, this isn't going to be a good choice of long-term partner for me. You've got to be out there in the arena to, to do those things. But at the same time, you're not so focused on how can I have a shinier persona? How can I have a shinier outfit? You're more focused on how can I be more true to me? How can I be more deeply myself? How can I trust that I'm enough and the right guy will see that I'm enough? <coughs> 
<coughs> excuse me, how can I relax on myself so that my own authenticity is of deep and real interest to me rather than <coughs> I'm magnetized to my own performance and I'm keeping myself in a hamster wheel that I didn't even know I was part of creating. If this is resonating with you at all, I wanna invite you to take my free webinar. You can just click the link below this video, find a time that works for you in your time zone and know that this webinar has been getting really good reviews. People have found it really powerful content. It's with my teaching partner, Clayton Olson, and we'd love to have you on the webinar. So just click that link, find a time that works for you. It's called the three keys to being relationship ready. And I think it'll be some of the best 90 minutes investment of your time. And as always, questions and comments below this video. I'd love to hear what you make of this. And as always, I'm Jack. Thanks for being here.